Right, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk. As you can see, taking a community initiative from idea to success, a bug smash case study, quite wood. Um, I'm Griff. I'm an agile delivery manager at Previous Next, and I also work on the Skipper hosting platform. Cool. Firstly, a bit about me. A few things I love. I love Red Rock Deli sweet chili chips and my Greyhound Bisto. You can see those wonderful things up there. <laughs> She's actually quite happy in that position. She just looks ridiculous. Um, but I'm not here to talk about any of that. I'm here to tell you about Bug Smash. So today I'm doing a little case study in the initiative. Here's what we're going to discuss. Firstly, what is Bug Smash? Uh, then, why does Bug Smash work? And finally, how can I get involved? And I'd like this to be a little back and forth audience interaction type thing today, guys. So sorry, you're all involved. Uh, so when you see a big question on the screen shortly, you'll see a big speaking head emoji. I'd love for you to shout it out. So let's try it. So in three, two, one. Great, so everyone's involved. Good reading. All right. Excellent question. Well, it's a community-run Drupal initiative set up to smash through bugs in Drupal Core. Good. <laughs> yeah, Drupal's great, but over time, a few bugs have appeared in Core. Well, more than a few. As of this morning, there are about 6,000 active bug reports for Drupal.org for Drupal 8 and 9. And with that many reports, there are bound to be duplicates or items that are no longer relevant, which in turn makes it even harder for, to us, for us to find and address real bugs in the platform. So our solution is to get in there and smash them. Uh, Everyone's doing really well. <laughs> well, it's all run by the hashtag bug smash channel on Drupal Slack. We've got shy, just shy of 500 members as of this morning. In the channel, we run a few separate streams of work. There's the daily triage target, which runs twice a day, once at about 10 a.m. in this time zone, and then again later in the day, so our friends in the US and EU have something to smash when they wake up. So you can see me, on the top left up there, we do a little tick when it's been smashed or actioned, and you can see later on in the day, so that's 8.30 p.m. in our time zone, some EU members jumping on. Shout out to Bug Smash, Bug Smash member Lendude for providing us with this handy bug bingo tool and also the graphs you'll see a bit later on in this presentation. There's the community triage meeting, which is run by the fantastic quiet one, which picks a theme and dives into a few bugs of that type. This is a great opportunity for members to learn about triage and getting bugs ready to be smashed or smashing them before they even get worked on. Recently, the triage meeting targeted the oldest active bugs in Drupal core. This resulted in a 16 year old bug being fixed and closed. So. Yay! I just want to highlight, bug smashing via triage is very important. While not completely fixing bugs, it makes it much easier for team members to pick up the tickets when they're ready. So it's testing, it's descriptions, it's things that are that old. And also, there's the fortnightly triage meeting, which runs asynchronously so that all global members can contribute. This meeting acts as a good catch-up on everything bug smash, it updates everyone on progress, and sets targets for the next few weeks. So if you're not sure about the initiative or want some guidance on what to work on, this can be a great place to start. But really, you can bug smash out on what you like. Uh, you, as long as you use the bug smash initiative tag on Drupal.org, you're contributing. Um, there's plenty of opportunities to get involved. As a seasoned Drupaler, you can tackle critical, older or much more complex bugs, or even mentor others on the daily triage threads. If you're a newcomer to the community or to Drupal in general, we identify beginner tasks that you can cut your teeth on control, core contrib. And there are also tasks without, for people without dev skills, like me. So such as handling comms and just getting the word out. Like this. <laughs> so. <laughs> great. Yeah, it does. So here's a graph showing the number of bugs that were active in Drupal core in October 2020. This is early in the initiative. We started in about May 2020. And here it is now. So, so we collect stats, which is a really important part, and I'll talk about that in a second. But you can see the bugs smashed across the board. We've got goals for each of those different types. But 
we're over 6,000 issues. And you can sort of see this graph is number of years open for the tickets. So if you look, jump backwards and forwards, like the first sort of five, well, zero to five years open age are greater than 1,000. And it's quite a substantial drop across the board. So it's, yeah, it works. It's really good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a reduction of over 6,000 bugs. I couldn't get the exact number of years it's dropped. I estimate it to about 25,000 years of rug reports. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, okay, so we've discussed what Bug Smash is. So now it's time for why does Bug Smash work? That's an interesting question, everyone. <laughs> Bug Smash isn't the first initiative of its kind in Drupal, and it's still growing after two and a half years. So why has it been effective? I want to first say that I'm only a tiny part of this community. I'm certainly not the leader. I'm just doing a presentation today. So I thought I'd ask everyone else for their perspective. So I really did what any product manager would do, and I made a feedback form. Opinions of were varied, as you'd expect of a community this size. I received responses from senior and junior Drupal community members, and members based in Australia, New Zealand, India, EU, US, it's all over the place. Here are some of the highlights. The first question I asked was, what works in Bug Smash? The most consistent response that I got was that it's simple. We smash bugs. The goal of reducing the overall bloat and bad stuff in Drupal Core, what's there not to love? But I think it's more than that. Other members add that it's not just about development, which especially for the older and more complex bugs, which take a lot of time and effort to address, this creates a barrier for new members or members with less time and just makes overall core contribution just more difficult. Another theme in the responses was education and mentorship. So Bug Smash is a coordinated community of senior, mid and junior level Drupal developers who are all tackling similar issues and can easily request support or advice to get things across the line. So we're all just working together and we're helping each other out. There's also the informal and low commitment nature of the initiative. So you can contribute as much or as little as you'd like. Members can drop in and to contribute on a topic that they're knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about and provide support, then drop out without disrupting the overall initiative. A people, people with families or if work's going on, they can do a ticket or two, respond to triage thread, and then, you know, them leaving again isn't that big of a deal. The second question I asked was, what keeps you coming back? So it's been open for two, for two and a half years. Why do people keep doing it? The responses were actually similar to what works, which makes sense. If it works, people keep doing it. The responses focused on education. So members said that they were learning heaps from the threads, the meetings, back and forth discussions about the bugs. Um, the community, great group of super smart people. Um, we don't have to fix the bugs, which makes a progress on the goals, and that's a big part of the triage component of Bug Smash. And people just said that it was really fun. So people said that it's their favourite thing to do in Drupal, which is quite <laughs> cute. Um, also, we got feedback that bugs have a discrete start and finish point. So they're either they're open, they're closed, they're fixed, or they're not. And that's different to a task or a feature, which is a much more open-ended and requires a lot of rounds of feedback. And finally, with the graph before, people like seeing the number go up, or at least in this case, go down. So a big motivator for this community has been seeing actively reported metrics and goals stats each fortnight. Well, in short, the initiative works because of its community, top. And the community is effective because of the structure of the initiative. They kind of help each other out. There are a few different non-demanding streams of work that provide ways to contribute to Drupal without overtaking your day. So you don't need to give your whole life up to this. And there's always someone around to point you in the right direction if you get stuck. So regularly in threads, someone's like, I need someone's help from Migrate, or I need someone's help over this thing who knows a bit more and they can help in that. Seeing the overall number of bugs in Drupal Core motivates everyone. Everyone likes seeing that graph. And it makes real bug mix means that real bugs are smashed sooner. It also skills up members of the community, either juniors that are looking to get more into core and overall open source contribution, or senior members looking to work alongside their peers and chip away at a few tickets a week. Overall, the more people working on Drupal and contributing, the better it's going to be for all of us. So if you want to start 
your own, or start your own Drupal or really any sort of open source contribution community, these could be some ideas that you implement. <laughs> Well, the best thing that you can do is join the, oops, the best thing you could do is join the hashtag bug smash channel on the Drupal Slack and say hi. Uh, there's a big explainer page uh, on Drupal.org that has all the info about what we do, uh, how it works, and when the next meeting will be. And just on that next meeting, they're open for 24 hours, so it doesn't really matter if you're in this time zone. It's run X you can see, so you can jump in whenever you want. Um, and I also want to call out that there's going to be a bug smash table at Friday's code sprint. So if anyone wants to meet people, see how it works, work alongside people on bug smash tickets, there'll be a table. I'm not sure who's running it, but we'll find out for you. <laughs> and finally, if you have any questions, please come and say hi to me. I'm around. I'm the only person named Griffin here. Or DM me on Slack. Um, a special thank you to everyone that contributed to that feedback form. It was really useful. And thank you all for listening. Cheers. Does anyone have any questions about bugs? Yeah. Do you ever run any first? We've really only done it in this in Drupal South around the code sprint tables. But I know in Malaysia, one of the members did an in person one. I think at DrupalCon they did. They used the bug bingo tool, which we use for the daily triage, and has done that like that. So um, yeah, we could probably show you guys how to do it at Bug Smash on Friday, and then you can spread wider if you're interested. So what we do, uh, it's hard to see it, but there's a, where the graphs are, we've got a single uh, page that has all the graphs and metrics that are reported each fortnight. And right at the top of the page, it says, give me a random bug. And we just go to that every morning and then post it in the Slack. So, yeah, it's random. And I think the filters are based on active and from Drupal 8 or 9, uh, 9 or 10, sorry. Yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, uh, Len Dude built that and it was really cool. It's very useful. Fantastic. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming.